Exactamente. Sí, sí. Menos mal, menos mal que somos cerca. Si no, el mundo nunca habría cambiado. Y todavía lo que nos queda por cambiar, ¿eh? que todavía... Yo soy muy Exacto. Opinada, pero todavía, todavía hay mucha lucha por delante. Exactamente, sí. Mira, y también te presento aquí a Hilaria y le a asomar. Hola. Y, ya, Sarizón. Encantada. Hola. Hola, ¿cómo estás? <risa> pues buenísimo que ellas asomen luego y que hablen también un poco, ¿no? Darles voz, yo creo que estaría muy bien. Cuantas les más... digo, les claro. digo que hablen, pero no hablamos. Que hablen, que sí, cuantas más pues, mujeres sí, pues, hablemos mejor. Uh -huh. Uy, ya está Juan ahí. Can you hear me? You? Yes? Okay, very good. Um, good evening and welcome to White Box at 9B9. The space is called 9B9 because we, we combine music, theater, politics, uh, community work, etc. Um, so three organizations, White Box, TVN2C, and Blueprint for Accountability, that used to be the Culture Project, the most political theater in New York City in its history. All of us are working together. So I'm super happy to have you all here. And finally, um, now we're reubicated into the East Village after 24 years of wondering where the hell could we put our bones for the last uh, <laughs> decade of white box. I think we should just call it quits in 11 years, right? and die in the East Village, where I came here in 1973 as a, a lovely young cat uh, escaping Franco's army. Now I'm surrounded by these beautiful people, majority Latin X, which is wonderful. Not Japanese, we have many others, right? You can come this way, back here, here. And, okay, this is the exhibition I've been working uh, watching uh, Johanna Raw for over a year, a uh, year and a half since we met. And um, to me, it was the jewel of the spring, because it mixes things that are very, very latent today, feminism, uh, you know, composting, social justice, politics, architecture, other than architecture, architecture is a piece of uh, social justice, really, that we all need. But I'm not going to bore you all to tears. I'm Juan Puntes. I'm the, f the extant founder of White Box 24 years later. Yeah? And I'm going to pass the microphone to Johanna M. Roa to introduce the evening and her curatorial. And thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hi, Blanca and Josefina hey. Mena. Love you. Uh, well, I I have to say that today I'm a little nervous. I'm not used to be nervous, but today, yes, because uh, Josephine and I have been working for 14 years, you know, and it has been an amazing process, hard sometimes, I believe that's for her and for me, uh, but we are happy to. Um, I would like to say thanks to White Boss to host the Matri Archive, especially to Juan Puntes, because he trust in the project, you know, because I talk about the feminist Matri Archive uh, can be crazy or mad for some people. And Juan, you know, trust in the project and because the process has been quite interesting, you know, and I believe that currently, the Matri Archive is richer, you know, than before. Uh, thanks to Josephine because she changed my life definitely. Uh, I'm grateful because we walked with her for these 14 years, and I believe that we have a long pack, uh, you know, in front of us. And I'm excited, you know, to, to still uh, walk with you. And I want to. I would like to read something, but I believe that today is uh, important to hear. You know, Angeles and Blanca and Josephine. Uh, but I need to read something. It's, it's too short. 
uh, Josefina Mena declares that resistance is a daily life active way of living. All human acts are political and our pro private micro actions affect the social macrostructures. Whether for an architectural project, a design, or a collective artistic work, or a scientific publication, Josephine recognized the intersection between social class, gender, context, the natural environment, and the daily personal relationship that structures the social arena. Its objective is to init initiate the infrapolitical change with manage to alter the traditional power structures, giving autonomy and self-management to the so-called subaltern. And, and thanks to Leah, Leah is today with us, that's amazing. I'm gonna tell you something about her. Then, uh, you will excuse me, but we have to thank the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs for making this exhibition possible. Little hand for them. <laughs> Our board members and other friends who've been working there, but often volunteering, etc. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And, and thanks to the artists, you know, who are involved in the project. Okay, uh, let me introduce you, Blanca de la Torre. Blanca, thank you. Uh, it's amazing, you know, having you here today. Blanca de la Torre works at the intersection of art, cultural studies, ecology, and sustainable practices. At this time, she is the general creator of the 15 Cuenca Biennale in Ecuador and ahead of the Aula Sostenible at CAAM, a permanent, permanent space dedicated to art and sustainability at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Las Palmas in Gran Canaria. She's also creating the exhibition in museums like a mock up in Serbia or in Finland, among others. And well, thank you. And please, we want to hear you. Thanks so much. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really thank you. Uh, well, especially to Juan, of course, longtime uh, friend, collaborator. Um, and I always feel like home uh, in White Box. And, and Johanna, thanks so much for inviting me. And congratulations uh, on your project. The Match Archive is amazing. And I feel really honored to be here uh, with all these amazing women. Always happy to be uh, surrounded by uh, inspiring women. So Johanna, I don't know um, if you want us to start making like this brief uh, introductions that we mentioned or uh, first? No, I, no, we we, uh, we wanted to hear you. You know, we have maybe five minutes and Angeles too. And after that, we can hear Lydia. And finally, we will have a Josephine. Perfect. So basically, well, in my case, like uh, my, brief, my brief presentation uh, is going to try to summarize ecofeminism uh, as um, it's possibly the movement or, or the wave that crosses all my curatorial practice, uh, as well as I find lots of interconnections with uh, Josefina's work and like, right? When, when Johanna introduced me, to her practice, um, to, to uh, uh, Josephina's practice, I thought uh, she could easily be a pioneer of this line of thought and action. Uh, it's a, a line of thought and action that speaks of justice, fairness, and equality. And um, well, in general, addresses all aspects to build more resilient communities. Basically, ecofeminists uh, emerged in the 1960s coinciding with the second wave of white feminism, but it was in the 1970s that the term was born, coined in 1974 by author and activist Francois Devon in her text, Le Feministe ou la Mort, uh, Feminisme or Death. Um, well, we cannot forget that at this moment, uh, the heyday of other social movements like feminist, pacifist, and environmentalist taking place, uh, which will mark the change. 
and um, in turn, uh, a short time frame, um, in, in a short time frame, three ecological disasters took place that gave impetus to the movement, right? It was um, Three Mile Island in 1979, uh, Bhopal in 1984, and Chernobyl in uh, 1986. Uh, well, as, as you all know, the Three Mile Island uh, nuclear reactor disaster in Pennsylvania is actually still the largest in US history. And it was the trigger for the first ecofeminist conference the following year under the title uh, Women on Life on Earth uh, Conference on the Ecofeminism in the 80s. And then uh, the first ecofeminist manifesto came to light after the Pentagon was fenced off by a group of women. Then uh, that same year, uh, Carolyn Merchant uh, publishes her seminal work, The Death of Nature, in 1980 where she uh, criticizes the modern sciences that uh, based on the destruction and subordination of nature, they um, associated as many of the scientists from like Bacon to Descartes or Max Weber, the discovery and knowledge of nature with power. In the case of uh, Merchant, uh, for her, the uh, reductionist science is at the root of the ecological crisis. Uh, at that time, incipient and, and today urgently critical um, in what implies the transformation and destruction of organic processes and regenerative capacities of nature. In the same way, uh, this eco ecofeminist philosopher made visible the link between the torture of witches, also promoted by Bacon and so on, and the rise of the empirical scientific method. Uh, you know that the objective of that inquisition in Europe was to subdue any possibility of a strong woman in order to build a new imaginary of the feminine, fragile, and delicate, um, entrenched especially through arts and nature. And that romanticization came hand, hand in hand with uh, that of nature idealized by the Euro uh, white male men, uh, Western male men, male men in a, a similar scheme of exotization that was applied also to the construction of the Russonian novel Shavar. Uh, all these three were symbolic constructs uh, designed as a complementary other to the rational white man, right? Um, as uh, Maria Mias and Vandana Siva point out, women, nature, and foreign peoples are the colonies of the white man, right? And well, basically, uh, Merchant uh, also demonstrates that the epistemological principle of the scientific method is based on violence and power. Uh, a model of knowledge still today is based on notions of development as continuous growth. And um, the foundations of the current model of thought progress, as well as the relationships between human beings and nature began to be forged in the 17th century especially after the publication of uh, Descartes and uh, René Descartes' discourse as method. And then these discourses uh, will be strengthened with the arrival of the enlightenment of the 18th century, right? Which ends up establishing the Western vision as a paradigm of the world. Uh, anyways, uh, long story short, as a um, philosopher, uh, Alicia Puleo points out ecofeminism is about a redefinition of a reality, right? Uh, a new vision of nature and of the human being in a, in a feminist twist to move towards a future of equality and sustainability, right? She, uh, she speaks of the need of integrity, eco-justice, sorority, and um, uh, criticizes the, what, what she calls the low-cost hedonism that uh, has led up that led us to environmental collapse and therefore uh, failure as a civilization, you know? So, well, in all its different currents of ecofeminism um, and, and sometimes uh, extremely diverse positions, um, the interconnection between the domination of nature and that of women is present. So, so that's it. I just found different connections between Josefina's and ecofeminism. And I guess that's what we can explore further in this conversation, if you want. I mean, I can start now, but I think it's better to leave the room to my colleagues and then we can start if you want exploring all these interconnections that I 
I just found like, well, basically to me also ecofeminism is not a theme nor is ecology, but uh, rather it has to do with a way of seeing the world with an attitude with, uh, you know, like a matter of approach to life that, you know, Josefina I think has lots in common. Thank you, Blanca. Um, yes, I have a couple of questions or ideas, but uh, I would like to say welcome to Angeles Donoso. We missed the last year. Uh, I'm a, a student in CUNY and I take a course with uh, her amazing tour. Angeles Donoso is an immigrant, immigrant educator and research from, from Santiago de Chile based in New York. She's a professor at the Borough of Manhattan Community College, CUNY and also teach at the Latin American, Iberian, and Latino cultures at the CUNY Graduate Center. Uh, thank you for, you know, uh, to be here today with the matriarchive. You know the process, you know the process, then please, we want to hear you. Thank you, Joanna and Johanna. And uh, thank you, Josefina, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Uh, with you and thank you Blanca for your words. Um, so I wrote something very short because uh, English is not my first language, so I'm gonna read, so bear with me. Um, so it begins with a casual encounter at the exit of a movie theater, for example. Perhaps it begins in a more intentional way with a letter, with an email nowadays, right? With a question posed at the end of a talk, an exhibition or a class. The important thing is that this encounter is, it cannot but be the first of many. These encounters, if they're happy, happy in Spinoza's sense. Uh, so Spinoza talks about like when two individuals or cells, they, they encounter, they can produce a happy, you know, happy encounter and uh, increase their, their potency, their potency. So if these encounters are happy, they may result in a new friendship, facilitate, provoke long conversations, create intimacy confidence, complicity. It is possible that this friendship may produce, or at least imagine, archives, an archives, or counter archives, no matter the name we choose. I'm just thinking about ways of collecting, preserving, making visible and disseminating dissident memories, practice of resistance, and the memories of feminisms. Feminist movements and feminist theories have drawn attention to acts of historical erasure and the consequent invisibility of the experiences and stories of historically marginalized groups or subjects. To repair this invisibility and ignorance, and in the best of cases, to dismantle the heroic or romantic stories that continue to be reproduced in different spaces and contexts, feminist researchers, historians, critics, curators, artists, activists have turned to the archive, to archives in general. The results of these labors are varied, but they almost always coincide in their subject matter, uh, women. There are countless biographies, fictional, fictionalized histories, films and series centered on remarkable or exceptional women whose lives and contributions to science, art, politics, fashion, or cuisine revolution have been ignored. In the field of art, there have been major exhibitions that have attempted to rescue the work of forgotten or you know, unknown women artists. Yet we should be wary of this rescuing gesture, I believe, uh, wary of the themes of the tropes and concepts it may reproduce or reinforce when they're done uncritically. So I'm gonna just quote here briefly uh, um, a, a, a theory that I really uh, admire, Ariela Sulai. She says, archive fever, and this is actually a text that we read in the course um, that Johanna was mentioned before. Archive fever is not reducible to the claim to study documents. Archive fever is the claim to revolutionize the archive to a different understanding of the documents it holds, of its supposed purpose, of the right to see them and act accordingly, the claim to the forms and ways of categorizing them, presenting and using them. And I think this is very important. It challenges the norm that has become the definition of an archival document as designed by sovereign power, documents the writing of which the powers that, that be dictate 
and later also order their hiding. So Azulay doesn't talk in terms of feminist archives, but I think you know we could we could point in the same direction. So what is a feminist archive? Which forms does a feminist archive take? What does a feminist archive do? And how does it do it? It is not my intention to answer these questions here, but I want to ask you or invite you to actually try to answer these questions yourself as you walk and browse around this exhibition. Because I think possible answers for these questions are manifested here in this matriarchive. Quoting, referencing others is a form of doing feminist memory. So I would like to bring here the words of a compañera, a fellow educator and researcher whom I greatly admire, and who happens to define herself as an almost archivist and almost cartographer. Her name is Paulina Varas. Paulina says in the first pages of her book dedicated to the work of artist and archivist Luz Donoso. And I quote here Paulina. I want to anticipate that this book is not about the construction of a stand-in story so it can be inscribed in a scene or in an art history where the artist has not been named. This research is closer to an exercise that wants to account for and take account of adjacent stories. An exercise of caring for that radicalism and desire for rupture that runs through Luz Donoso's work but that also continues to be alive every time we pay attention to the neutralization of the impulses that create other forms of life. It is then about snuggling these forms of eruption in the most tender and delicate way possible. I think this is the only time I've seen the words snuggle, eruption and tenderness in the same sentence, you know, and also talking about archives. But yes, I think feminist archives are full of tender eruptions. And this is also another example. As Paulina shares, it was thanks to the memories of other women that she came to know the work of Luz Donoso and her archival practices. First of all, the memory of artist Lottie Rosenfeld, who had several photographic records of Luz Donoso, and then that of Luz's own daughter, Jenny Holgram, who was the guardian of her mother's archive. Safe despite everything is, according to Paulina, the situated feminist persistent and rebellious response of women to the oblivion of history with capital H or to the erasure, uh, erasures of in the archive with capital A. And of course, this practice of safe everything, despite everything, can take different forms. Um, the, so, and this is, I think, uh, one of the reasons why feminist expanding archives do not exist in a stable manner. Their appearance always occurs in a situated way in the combined consideration of ephemeral objects and delicate documents that were not made to remain in the archive. And they also kind of, um, they ask from us, you know, uh, we don't, we're not also only as spectators of these archives, but they're also invite us to engage with them. So here you can actually touch, you know, some of the uh, materials that are here. You can actually uh, sew uh, if you want in that, in that piece over there. And I'm sure Johanna will talk about this afterward. So, uh, thinking about the work and the friendship that, uh, um, sorry, 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 yeah. Uh, so I was talking about the memory, right? And, and how um, um, Paulina mentioned that she had uh, get to know the work of Luz Donoso through these other artists. And it was the same in my case. I was thinking like, I only got to know uh, the work, uh, you know, Josefina's work through Johanna, uh, Johanna telling me this story about Josefina, but then also Johanna knowing all of these, you know, past experience because of her relationship with, with Josefina. So it's kind of like a it's a it's a it's a chain that doesn't end, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna quote again Paulina. These other documents and objects, which are preserved by these other women to define possible worlds, archives full of patience and delicacy, inspire my memories and help to situate me in the present because we too must protect these memories today giving them a new critical meaning. And this new critical meaning that Paulina speaks about has to do with the forms in which we, we researchers, archivists, activists, artists, help to activate documents and archives. Uh, and I'm thinking like giving the hyper visibility of images and the normalization of feminist queer archives and archival experiences in large museums or institutions it becomes necessary the activation of these experiences in spaces or places that allow for other forms of knowledge and memory making. Places like this one, for example, a white box that is not a, a white box, right? 
Um, so thinking about the work and the friendship that imagined, elaborated, and needed this matriarchive, uh, to which Josefina and Johanna invite us to be part of today, I came back and I remember these words and evocations of Paulina. When I met Johanna last year in the midst of the pandemic, the first thing I learned about her and by way of her was this project, the Patriarchy, this work that she has been developing with Josefina for over 14 years. I remember that her description of the Matriarchy made me evoke the gestures, affects, and acts I had previously found in Paulina's account of her work with Luz Donoso's archive. Complicity, commitment, tenderness, memory, writing, imagination, listening and accompaniment. I was struck by the coincidence between the ways of doing archival work of the researchers and curators, Johanna and Paulina, and also by the ways of doing feminist memory work embodied by the archivists and artists themselves. And I don't know, I, I don't think Josefina and Luz Donoso ever, ever met, uh, Luz is, is, is younger, but she was one of the guardians of memory during the, the dictatorship, you know, in the 80s, and Josefina left Chile right before the coup, and she actually brought with her many of the materials, the objects that you see here, and one of the ways in which uh, Josefina expanded also what was happening in Chile was by using some of the photos by Coeg Wessing, for instance, who actually remained in Chile after the coup, and using these photos to create posters of solidarity, so actually to expand and visibilize the solidarity with Chile and the resistance abroad. Uh, so, so feminist complicity, I think, is made manifest here in the concern for the archives form. This form wants to be consistent with Josefina Mena's thinking and doing, with her way of archiving, at the same time situated, translocal, and expanded. And we see it all around, right? Uh, all of which was effect of her migrations and displacements. So the matriarchive attempts to account for these ways in which feminist memory operates through its very deployment. So we actually, what we see here, I think it's, it's, it's this effort for actually trying to show, you know, and, 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 em, and embody and, and make a space for a form of, of, of feminist uh, archiving and doing memory, uh, feminist memory. So, and with this, I'm gonna finish. Feminists engage in activism in the streets and on social networks. And part of this activism involves documenting, collecting, and disseminating. These are all integral tasks of feminist memory work. Uh, the recovery of demands also of slogans, of repertoires, of actions, and collaborative work previously, uh, you know, formulated by fellow comrades, groups, collectives, and movements is also part of this work. Um, and this is important in order to activate these memories in the present. So this way of making feminist memory, one that reveals the continuity between the past and the present, and that insists on the unresolved nature of the demands and the issues, and I can't help but think now about, you know, all these uh, attacks on, on abortion rights that are, that are happening across the states. So the, this way of making feminist memory does not repeat in the same way, but recovers by expanding, by making identity categories even more complex. And one example, for instance, is the category of women, right? Like we cannot think about the category of women now as we thought about COVID like 50 years ago and by articulating different structures. Hello, I want to say hello to Lilia, Lia Antunes, not easy to pronounce your name. Lia, well, Lia is a friend. Lia, I need to say this. Lia contacted us maybe one year ago or one year and a half ago. Uh, she's a feminist architect. She's one of the founders of the Mulheres na Arquitectura, Women in Architecture in Portugal. Uh, and she contact you uh, because um, her PhD thesis is about the participation of women in the Saal project in Portugal during the 70s. And one of uh, these women is uh, Josephine. Then since that moment, we you know started to work together so closely. Uh, thank you because you have been a great support you know, from Portugal to enrich the matriarchs. Then thank you, Leah, and please we want to hear you. Thank you, Johanna. It's 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 really my 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 pleasure 
to be here today with you. Uh, so really for me, it's, it's an honor to be here today uh, to share this moment with you all. And of course, I, I would prefer to be there in person. But let's let's try this this online version. So over the last year or a year and a half, yes, it's been wonderful to to learn uh, from uh, Josefina and Johanna's incredible journey. So I'm a huge a huge fan of this of these women, and I thank you uh, both for for this moment. Uh, so I wasn't prepared to speak today. I came here to listen, but but I would like to to share with you uh, how my work in, intersects uh, with uh, with them. Uh, as Johanna said before, I am a, a Portuguese a feminist architect, and I am doing my PhD thesis about the the SAL process in Portugal and the techni technical and resident women during this, this post-revolution period in Portugal. Uh, so after the April 25 of 1974. So finding the story of Josefina in the Liberdade neighborhood uh, in Setúbal and be, uh, being able to cross it with other women here has been a wonderful experience, really. And uh, so just to context a little bit uh, for women in Portugal, the end uh, of the dictatorship and, and these first years of uh, democracy were so important for the achievements of basic citizenship rights. It was really a, a long and conservative and patriarchal uh, dictatorship that uh, I guess that left uh, its marks until uh, uh, today. Uh, so long that only in April of this year, we are in Portugal living more days in democracy than in uh, dictatorship. So it's, it's a long one. But women, technicians and residents um, were very important in, in all this process. They were really active in the struggles for the right to housing and other care infrastructures, especially the women of the, of the, the grassroots. So they, they fought for houses and they fought an ingrained uh, machismo. So I think it's, it's this for, for, for now and I wish you a good uh, exhibition. And I just want to underline my great admiration for Josefina, for Johanna, for their friendship and for the wonderful work of the archive and of course for all the, the team. So thank you so much. Uh, okay, well, finally, I have to introduce Josephine that is very complicated because, you know, as complicated as has been the process to create her matriarchal. Because Josephine, yes, uh, uh, she is an architect. She has been working in alternative technologies. She was involved uh, in different social movements, not only during the 16 and 17. This is just a part in this exhibition. He has been doing uh, that job all, all her life. But at the same, um, we meet at the entrance of a cinema in Mexico City, and we start to talk suddenly. Uh, and I remember that she told me about, about her eco-feminist project. And I said, oh, that's amazing. We should, you know, make an audiovisual. We need to do that. This is amazing. We need to spread, we need to spread this information. And when I made the first interview, she started, I remember she started to talk about Portugal, Ireland, London, London, you know, Italy, South America, Africa. And, you know, it, I remember that those interview took maybe two, two years more. That was crazy. We never, we never meet the, the, 
you know, the audiovisual. And um, it drove me crazy for too much time. And one day I say, okay, let's go over the materials. And that day I say, oh my God, I have a big situation. How can I do that job? And it took me 12 years more. And I have to, you know, to connect with a lot of people because I realized that Josephine used to work in a transdisciplinary, transnational, transnational way. Then uh, if you see today, we have a Blanca, Lilia, and Angeles to talk about Josephine and me. I'm an art historian, I'm an visual artist, and when just, just one discipline is not enough to try to put in context uh, her life. Then, uh, Josefina, thank you. You know, I love you. That's amazing. I'm, I'm welcome. We are waiting for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nikita Johanna. It is a great honor for me to be here with you all today. The artists and people who have responded to the call of the Matur Archive, activating it with their own contributions. I want to thank enormously Johanna Roa and Juan and Apuntes from White Box for this excellent project that allow us to dialogue using the past, read our present better, and plan for our future. In New York City, where the migrant community maintains its resistance, reassessing its own identity. My father, Jose Menesef, was part of the first generation of Lebanese immigrants born in Mexico. He taught me the importance of finding what is needed, what is missing in the social context where we find ourselves at a specific historical moment. We also taught, he also taught me that failures are lessons that we have to decipher to find what we are looking for. And he also so told me that every day we can learn something new and that there will always be an event where we apply that we learn from it. If we can interpret the reality which we find ourselves. For 14 years, Johanna and I, we have discussed important events that mark the decade 1967-1976. The military coup against legitimate government of Allende in Chile. The victory of Vietnam against USA's imperialism. The Carnation Revolution in Portugal. The freedom of former colonies. Portuguese colonies. Many of us, we participated in all these events, facing very complex reality, moving along all the time. As Johanna mentioned, he was very, it implied many disciplines would be able to understand these realities we were participating in. Looking for what was happening, what I was missing, I found myself vis-a-vis -vis an intersectional reality that requires a variety of instruments from architecture, ecofeminism, agroecology, many economical theories and political organizations. So I decided to keep all these documents, newspapers, photographs, etc., in a fairly systematic way so we could share those special experiences with others from different perspectives, somewhere, sometime. Never mind the risk that carrying that kind of material could mean for me. The main objective being to learn from our failures, because in this historical moment, we can't afford to make the same mistakes 
as 50 years ago. With my return to Mexico in November 76, the material that I rescued and mailed from Santiago to London before the coup, and the material collected in Africa and Portugal remained strictly underground. In the beginning, I miss the constant presence of a CIA agent who watched me all the time in Portugal until the day I returned to Mexico. This took me 22 years, up to 2008, when I met Johanna in that cinema in La Condesa, uh, where we were seeing this picture called Swats. It seemed that neither Johanna nor I could dare to say out loud phrases against the war, the, the war for sale, this mercantilist war that connected us forever. Dialoguing, dialoguing with Johanna implied losing that fear and a different way of confronting those fights that our documents attest to was generated. Johanna managed to articulate a way to share an open archive where we can learn from each other and we can transcend our realities. Using the documents that I saved, she made an excellent instrument that allows to recapitulate, recognize ourselves, reevaluate ourselves, and vindicate what we can. It's essential to understand that in this process, we have learned from our past and from various people who, in their context, have allowed us to create new codes of life. One thing I remember that it was very useful from the time where we abandoned Chile and, and we were working in Portugal is that we managed to learn something. In Chile, we didn't have community radios. In Portugal, all the communities have radios that the movement of the movement of armed forces, our soldiers, left-wing soldiers, installed in all the communities. And when the invasion of NATO in Lisboa with 40,000 Marines, they block Lisboa. We didn't have water or light, but no people, many, many people who would have been killed were not killed because we were in constant communication with each other. Reality is the intersection of all our value systems. The way we make decisions allow us to redefine the problems until we find its solution. But that solution is not found alone, nor is it the result of heroes. We can find it articulating many stories, many and learning how to transgrade the past with our present. I thank enormously life for having been able to reach 80 years old of age and be here with all of you today because I dream with you. I dream with all of you. I didn't know when, but I knew that one day we will meet. And I hug you with a lot of love. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Josephine. Um, I would like to know if, if there is a question or a comment about, I have a question, but, you know. Uh, there is something that Josephine used to say that, she say that we can continue, continue making the same mistakes that we made 15 years ago. Then I would like to ask you, you know, to ask you, Angeles, Josefina, and Blanca, 
um, what is the difference? What is the point to be resisting today than before? You know, what is the difference and what is the point? You know, because I believe that is no different. Josephine, when we are, you know, working with the document, she always says things like, she always says things like, uh, oh, we made that, but now it's different for that reason. Then what is different? Angeles, Blanca, okay. Josephine. Okay, um, well, I think um, some of the projects by uh, Josephine um, allude to this uh, cultural and social space is taken over by masculine power, and that that is that is still there. Uh, and well, it's interesting how she was in the early seventies already speaking about building community through architecture and in order to build community uh, i think the important the important is uh to break with the current statue queue right uh to break with those uh spaces taken over by masculine power and and of course leaving aside the male power and patriarchy and you know and she also was speaking about creating a new social order right and uh, well, I think that's that's still very fresh. <laughs> I mean, even though you know she was already talking about all that in the seventies, and uh, um, of course some things have changed, but that's still the axis of the I don't know fights and and resistance that we still have uh, ahead of us. with what Blanca is saying. Um, I think that one thing that is perhaps different is that perhaps now we have more language. So there are, there are ways of naming things. So, and when you name things, you can recognize them. Uh, I mean, feminicide, you know, like, or gender violence, things that have always happened, right? Uh, and they continue happening, racism, but when you keep adding words and language to be able to define these things, I think it, they also become uh, more visible. Um, so maybe it, perhaps it becomes easier to organize around those things. But I don't think that uh, it's like it's cycle. So it's like we're you know there's like backlash and then there's like so I don't think that we have uh, we're in a much better place now than fifty years ago. Uh, in a certain moment, when we know when I started to create the, the archive, I I said, okay, I'm gonna do that in the best way that I can do it, you know. And at that moment, I was working in Mexico in a master uh, program of conservation and preservation of documentary collection, and I have the tools, you know, the proper tools of the archival as discipline has. And in a, in a certain moment, I realized that if I use that me traditional method, I'm gonna, I, I could kill the Josephine voice, you know? Then I had to create a method to, to do that process. And um, I decided to name it Ines, it's an intersectional, uh, intersectional expanded system. And at the same time is my, the, my mother's name. Uh, and this, this method, is useful to create archive in, in not a patriarchal way or a lineal way, and even is useful to, you know, to use traditional archive to try to climb to, to recover the information that is high, you know, even the, the life, the name, the body. And um, on that way, I would like to say that the participation of the artists in this exhibition uh, uh, are trying to point out the different ways to expand the archive, like uh, Claudia Baez. Claudia Baez is uh, working with uh, some photos, not of, of the Josephine archives, but with some photos of Cohen Wessing. And if you see, it can articulate in the same language that the photographer, and it can expand it, uh, the archive. Or for example, this is Sadia Rayman. She's an artist from Pakistan. The, is on the middle of the uh, this wall, and she worked. You can you can find some 
similar shapes, you know, with the photographers in Portugal who were uh, using those materials. But there are other archives like uh, Roland, for example, who is here with us. Uh, he's uh, the author of the sculpture that is uh, in the middle of the hall. Uh, for uh, him, it's important, the voice. And in archive, that is the place to get the information, you know, to recover bodies that are hidden, memories. And, and about the body, for the reason, for example, Lilia, the piece of Lilia that is at the end of the hall, is a, is a body, you know. The archive is plenty of, of, of um, mm, fingerprints. You never can hide that, you know. That's something that I have to face face it, you know, in when I start the process. I'm, well, in, in general, the artist. I would like to say maybe someone, uh, you know, want to ask something. I, I would like to underline another point, um, and that's it's, it's how capitalist production has a precondition, which is the the, the production of life that take pl takes place in invisible spaces and and that follows a logic opposed to that of capital and i think with with the archive you are also um putting in the table and making visible those invisible spaces and i think that's that's also very very important nowadays thank you blanca and uh, thank you angeles uh, Josefina and Leah, thank you everybody to be here. Uh, I would like to invite you. We have a uh, quite interesting piece in the garden of White Box. Uh, we have um, Ivan Navarro and Courtney Smith. They developed an amazing project. We can interact with, with uh, the piece. And um, please enjoy the exhibition and thank, thanks to Juan again. Well, the Courtney Smith or Ivan Navarro would like to tell us a little bit before we go off. Corey, could you come up here? Just come to the camera. Yeah, I can, maybe that will help if I if I can um, refer to it. He's coming right back with, um, but the the piece that this does, yeah, it does. Oh, we cannot see you. Oh, for them. Okay. Okay. okay, so the piece that we've created is a, it's a, it's a, I'm calling it Hirasol Mandala. It's a, it's a floor map to a participatory action that, um, that we will actually, that will have a more elaborate form in an, in another venue in, um, in a, in a next week. But th this here is the map. So in, in a way it's, it is the, the print for, for how it works, but it's, it's an action that is, uh, a, I'm, a com I'm calling it a combined circumambulation. So it refers to the, to the movement of walking around, um, walking around a space. In this case, it's, it's, it does, it, uh, we will put something in the center. We haven't, but it, but it's, uh, it's a symmetric form that's the superimposition of a square, two crosses, two Greek crosses and an Andean cross. So the, the reason that this makes any sense in this context is that the, the work that we do is very much dedicated to an alternative way of working in every way. So, it, so it's their participatory actions, they're unrehearsed, there's no product associated with it at all. So um it's it's very much going against the current of the the you know the the dominant system and the, that we are living in today as artists so um and because of that i consider it to be very much um in line with the spirit of the matriarchization or and i and i when i wrote about it i thought of it as a rematriarchization because it's a return to two ways of thinking, or I, I like very much the Ines, the intersectional, that's very relevant to everything we do, expanded systems that go beyond and hark back to ancestral knowledge from many, many um, cultures that are no longer 
dominant references for us today. So it's about returning to something also that's root, and that was something that I gleaned from Josefina's work, that she's going back to get information from indigenous cultures and trying to implement them into our society in a, in a larger way. So in that sense, I, we have intersections with this and we, the piece itself is very much about, literally about intersections, about, about circuits, trajectories, circularity, counterclockwise motion and intersections and the negotiation of intersections. Thank you. Would you like to ask questions from the audience? If anybody, does anyone have a question, a comment, or want to twist? Sir. It's a question to the panelists, to the participants. Um, hi, everyone. Um, first, I want to share immense gratitude for uh, sharing these thoughts, um, this incredible exhibition and all of the work across decades, across generations to put, to put this together. I feel the immensity and the power of that in this room. I also feel like this is a very much a kind of family gathering and you know the attention to tenderness and to care that can revive these archives. I really appreciate you foregrounding that. Um, a question that I have is with regard to this transmission of lessons across generations, a lot of times we will receive an archive, but we'll get really just a glimpse of the entire context around which it was made. And so part of the work of archiving, and I really loved what Angeles had said about recovering in order to expand. And so I'm wondering um, if uh, anyone from the, the panel could speak about the role of storytelling or the sharing of these contexts in order to bring about some more of this context of these these specific archives um, uh, so that they're not just materials that we can briefly get a slice of history, but that there's a story that is related to the archive. So I, I hope that um, if anyone could speak about the role of storytelling or transmission of history through uh, and, and with archives. And thank you again for bringing this event together. Um, may, I, may I say something, please? Safina. Yes. Yes, thank you. Please. Yes, thank you. I, I would like to share with you um, what has changed after all these 14 years working with Johanna, you know. I, I think uh, in the work that my group does uh, in Grupo de Tecnología Alternativa, we are more conscious that, that to whom we should address ourselves if we want to change society, you know? And I give you an example. The Banco Inter in the International, the Banco Internacional de Desarrollo, the BID, the, BID, the Banco Inter Interamericano de Desarrollo, has uh, uh, generated resources so we can uh, contribute to the huertos, you know what is huertos, um, you know, people that work uh, in a particular area of the community uh, producing vegetables and so on, you know, yeah. And we we had two, two, two examples, we had two places. One was in Santo Domingo, Coyoacán, which is a, an area, muy, very interesting area, a brave area of people pushing for the future. And the other one was in Tlatelolco, you know, in areas where they, people go to the uh, huerto, you know, as a hobby. I mean, they do it on Sundays or weekends, you know. Uh, and we realize we have no time for working for people that use cultivating vegetables as a hobby. Yeah. We have to concentrate on people that work the land. We have to concentrate with the people that really are peasants and indigenous people who understand the value of the earth. Yes, and the earth, how important it is for us. 
mainly us women who we are earth as well. Yes, and we give birth because we are earth. Yeah, and so now we know to whom we should address ourselves and not waste time with people that are just on ecology or thinking, saying that they are worried about the, the crisis we are living at the moment. Uh, who does it just for a hobby or for anything else, but not for loving the earth. And this is very important for us. We have managed to center our objectives and center our narration, you know, and this is thanks to all the people that we have learned from each other in this group. Yeah. And for me, this is very important not to waste time. We have to get things which are socially needed. The main thing is that they are socially needed, that we are ecologically valid, but also that they are economically viable. Therefore, we have to address ourselves to the working people, to the agricultural people, in other words, working people. And this has changed our focus in society. That's something in our group, we have learned from this archive that Johanna has created. Thank you. Well, to me, regarding the um, storytelling question, I believe that these sort of archives are very important in uh, creating new narratives. I think it's uh, more than obvious that uh, the old narratives have failed and, uh, you know, all these. Um, much archive uh, thing or any archive of, of this sort, I think it's a, it's a very important starting point for uh, building a new paradigm, the new paradigm that, that we need today. Yeah. Thank you. I would like to say something to finish uh, the uh, round table. Uh, I, I said that it took me two years, you know, that I was talking with Josephine for two years about the documents of, of the archive. And during those two years, I never, never, never hold any document, you know, in my hand. I never touched it. I just had the voice of Josephine saying things. And at that moment, I realized that uh, the heritage for women is quite different because we offer the knowledge using the voice. And I realized that as an art historian, my part of my job was create categories and ways, you know, to make make possible to record the stories and the history of the women. I believe this is this is for me the the place, you know, to make. Uh, a good, to find a good way to your resistance, you know, for me. And it's, it's, it's a different way to say things. And I believe that this is, this has been our way for Josephine and, and, and for me. And I believe that uh, it, it makes you, it makes you face the life in a, in a hard way sometimes because it's not easy, you know, say or, or put value in, in things that for, for anybody cares, you know, for anybody cares to women talking about, you know, something. Oh, no, lady, you need to write the proper history. You need to say that in Chile in 1973, they could do that, da, 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 da. but I have to say, Josephine uh, had friends and they were connected on, in a different way. And it pushed, pushed me to expand the archive. And we talk about to create a net not aligned and that make make crazy everything even this exhibition if you see was hard to put the context of the cities we have there uh you know a contest in chile uh some you know architect I mean, architecture design in portugal uh more information about portugal that alternative technologies to radical technologies some things in chile and and different people and artists are working at the same time 
And I believe that it's, it's more like uh, being involved is an experience. It's not about the history, it's, it's about the personal uh, experience when you are working out there to, you know, to answer your question. I believe that this is a good way. Then I use it, the interviews with Josephine to create the archive. That, that makes a completely different, you know, to create the records, you know? Then when the people in the future, because I'm working with a mathematician uh, on that uh, database, when the people in the future try to find the information, they will find the Josephine voice and of course mine. And I have to say that I'm here. I'm not a neutral point, I'm here. And all my fingerprints are for everywhere. And I'm, I'm a feminist, I'm a Latin American. My first language is Spanish, so you will find that. And maybe you can find to a different way to understand the archive. Yeah, we're trying to offer that opportunity, you know, to the people to create an experience. It's not easy, it's, it's crazy, it's not sure. You know, the, sci the scientific method always say that it's sure. We are trying to say that it's not sure. No, because we don't know what is the completely true. That's never exists. No, so that's the way, and that's the way this is exhibition. This, exhi this exhibition maybe is, is about the doubt, you know? It is about doubt. <laughs> that one, Mrs. Jones. Well, listen, it is a great pleasure for White Box uh, re born in the East Village by choice. We gave, we didn't want to go to Tribeca to be chic. We didn't want to go to the heart of Orchard Street or back to Chelsea, God forbid. Yep. And uh, this is a village, an alphabet city. As a matter of fact, where I came here 73 years ago as a stupid draft evader, you know? Um, uh, and uh, this is like a deja vu in a way to, to find myself in this uh, village. Of, I call it a village, Matthew Archive, in resistance to me and with you all here and the ones online watching us, is a village within a village. So I welcome you all. Please put your email addresses there. We're going to do something beautiful now. And I think all the panelists um, love you all. Um, each one gets its own little chair, which comes from the Merce Cunningham studio in the back of it. You'll see if you're lucky. Uh, John Cage um, composition's name, right? You can <laughs> see where it was. <laughs> uh, a lot of silence in those compositions. I love that, right? Well, right now, it's beautiful silence. So pick up the chair, bring it outside, and Courtney, Smith, Ivan Navarro are going to meet us there, and let's look at their beautiful engaging uh, project that they, they will also share what other gallery space would be having and, and a, a sister brother project and we hope to collaborate because we came here to alphabet city to collaborate to raise community um you know i see people from east harlem where we spent three years around here marcos Suntayer, boricua etc it's, it's beautiful to have you again a new in the village yep and with that thank you so much josefina um lyria blanca I love you. Thank you. And let me tell you, um, we had a grant and we had to spend it, right? The New York City Department of Cultural Affairs plus what we do match um, in many ways in sources. And um, when I you know, began the first conversation uh, in Harlem, but a year and a half ago or so, right, um, with Johanna, was like, okay, it's a beautiful archive. Uh, I began to read it. I said, fantastic. I love it. I just did it. But how the hell can we convince the Department of Cultural Affairs that this is an exhibition? It's going to be artists. And we're going to have to spend money on doing it and blah, 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 properly. And then report that boring aspect of reporting a grant <laughs> successfully. And I said, well, you have a big job. Uh, Johanna, and I'm going to help you. We need a set of artists, academics, writers, and others to respond as some of these artworks around here and the artists are here. Also to write back, responding to that beautiful letter, 
you all go online and you white box and white org material having resistance go through it and it's a beautiful thing by the way we might be moving it to portugal for the 50th anniversary of la revolution del clavel okay we're working that very seriously love to bring it to chile if possible right and take the speakers with you <laughs> right here it's pocket all right well that's it was it's very i would say successful in the sense that you created a village joanna and um with all the collaboration of the artists and writers academics and some architects who, the most difficult guys were the architects and girls what is the architecture <laughs> i'm asking you <laughs> josefina wrap up finish this chapter <laughs> Acabes de, de, dinos dinos donde esta la arquitectura coño tell us go ahead where is the architecture <laughs> <laughs> you want me to show it what 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 would you like me to do uh, he went, he wants to know where is the architecture for what where is the architecture is does the the, the next archive we are going to do isn't it is the less the next 30 40 years after these events that you are publishing uh, this is the third <laughs> This is the currently project of Josephine. You know, it, it's not part of this exhibition, but Josephine, when, when she returned to Mexico, she developed an amazing, amazing project to process the biological uh, garbage, you know, including human excrement. You know, it's faster, it uh, doesn't produce other animals. It's amazing. And, and we are, that's, we are rescuing great. We are rescuing the main principle of the Chinampa uh, Mexica, you know, which means that you use fecal matter, human fecal matter, as an inoculant to transform all the organic solid waste in in earth. So we are we are producing earth. We are earth producers. Yes, and this is fantastic. Because we are attacking the system of sewage, the sewage system based on alcantarillado, which is the system of Osman in, Peri in Paris, which is uh, conducting all the wastewater somewhere else, very far away to process it. You know, when the Chinampa tells you, you can process everything here and now. In other words, you waste as a human being, which is excreta or fecal matter, the do waste of your of your uh, nourishment, etc. You can process everything here. You don't have to take it anywhere because it doesn't stink. It doesn't stink because we intervene the process before it becomes in, in, a, in, a, in a process where it begins to produce a gas methane or methane gas. Yeah, and this is very important that we can learn from each other in this situation. We have many uh, technical solutions for all kinds of people and if you are, live alone, if you live in a condominio, if you live in a big house, etc., you know, and, and the idea is that we start is investing all these millions of pesos conducting of dark waters somewhere where there is a big plan that is going to solve the problem, but he never solved it. We women, we are interested in solutions not in analyzing problems. The problems we have already analyzed them and we have already found solutions. And we want to implement these solutions. That's what we want. And this is 
making implies a very a very important change in the economics of infrastructure in our countries you know and i ought to tell you we have several of our people who work with us who were killed for that though they never thought that somebody will kill us for processing human shit but it was it was true Beatriz in Guatemala was killed because he was teach, he was teaching people to use sanitation, ecological sanitation units, dry units. We'll kill for that. And this is very important to understand. We are menacing very important interests, very important interests. And we have to get united to be able to overcome that. Always trying to find solutions, solutions that work, that can work, that we can make them work. We all people can work it, make it work, the main thing. And we have uh, produced uh, marvelous equipment that work very well, <laughs> according to us. Yes, yes. Thank and you, have... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you more. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, now we can proceed going to the garden, bring your own chair. So architecture seems to be implementing solution. Yes. Thank you, Josefina. We love you. <laughs> love you as well. Bueno, un placer. Adiós, un placer. Un placer, queridas. Hasta pronto, espero. Sí, Josefina. Sí, sí amiga. Grande, muy grande. Adiós. Gracias, adiós. Gracias. Cuídense mucho. Gracias, igualmente. Qué bonito, ¿verdad? Muy bonito, doctora. Felicidades. Ay, muy padre. Muchas felicidades, José.
Hola, hola. Hola, hola. Yes, where's the camera? Where's the camera? Okay. Right here. Right here. So, you have to go to the center? No, I don't. No, because this is like a super activated, like, sacred space. We're not just a walk out of the room. Oh, yeah. And after this, there's another performance in the interior. By Maria Belia Marmoleco is here. Maria Belia Marmoleco is right there. Now, partners, me is going to introduce this game. Then we also have a uh, sister brother piece at Revolver. Yes, yes, yes this is it. Grand and, and Eldridge, 88 Eldridge. Eldridge. Street. Um, okay, so, um, so um, most important, important is it, I should say, that this is not a performance at all. At There's, all. N it's, um, right now what we have here There's is really just, just the, 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 the map, map for what, what we, and, we, and in fact, let me be clear, it's never a performance. There is no performance. Performance is um, an inadequate word. It's a, it, the, what Juan said as game is, the, is actually more accurate, except it's a game. If it's a game, it's not a game because there's no objective, there's no strategy, there's no ability needed to do anything. So it's, it's hard to say exactly what, what type of activity it is because it's half game, but it's not performed. The people who participate are volunteer, spontaneous participants. There's no rehearsal, which means that whatever happens, happens organically and naturally. There's a, there's a plan, there's a map, there's, there's a trajectory to follow, but each person, it's up to their indi individual self whether they may or may not follow it, and if they don't follow it, Perfectly, that's incorporated, and there's no there's no problem. So, right today, we were not even planning to do any type of um, of uh, activation of the piece. It was really just the visual today, and we were going to do it. But since we're all here, we can take this opportunity to do um, an improvisation with four volunteers to to um, just give a sense of what the what the what the what the map says. So here we have. Four, four, four shapes. Four shapes. You, have you have a black, black solid, solid line, line which, which defines, defines a square. square. You, have you have a red, red solid, solid line, line which defines a, a, a square, square cross. cross. You have a red, red broken, broken line, line along the external perimeter which is an Incan cross. cross. And, and you have, have a broken black, black line, line in the interior that is a smaller square cross. Inside each one of the corner of the of the four corners of the inner of the black square, you have circles 
dif um, di with an or uh, Ouroboros image of, the, of a snake eating its tail. Well, in fact, it's a double snake eating its tail to represent the movement. The red snake is a clockwise motion, and the black snake is a counterclockwise motion. So m the piece focuses around a, clock a counterclockwise motion. However, two of the movements will incorporate collisions of clockwise and counterclockwise movements. So to start, really simple, we, we, um, each one of the four volunteers will begin at the, each one of the four cardinal points. So up the, in the middle of the, the points of the cross. So you guys can start there. And, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, good idea. So, so at the, at the so guys, uh, it's, so you, you start right outside here. I guess you're, you're just gonna start right there. So, so we're gonna start really simple and Um, counterclockwise counter motion. motion. So, so that's, that's counterclockwise motion. Exactly. Start, start the right. So, so maybe in the black square. Black in the square. square. And yeah, he's, no, you guys are in the black. black. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's no. Um, there's absolutely no uh, information about how to navigate intersections, and so you guys will do that. The way this is going to happen, when it happens, it will happen to percussion. So why don't we all clap rhythmically to create a rhythm for them to do their circumambulation?
Elegancias, esas cachinas, como diría mi abuela. Good luck. 
Hear me? Yep. Very good. All right. So um, this is going to be the wrap up of. Where is the camera? It's a computer. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Apologies. We're running over. Well, like a chicken without a head. Anyhow, I'm very honored to present Johanna Roa, curator, presenting Mrs. Marmolejo and the performance that she's going to do. Because you know much more. And I don't want to invent more than I have to. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us in this beautiful material time in this city. I'm really proud to introduce to you Maria Belia Marmolejo. Maria Belia Marmolejo is the first performer artist in Colombia. Quite political, she abroad, you know, the complicated themes of the violence in South America and especially uh, in Colombia. Uh, today, uh, Maria Belia has a performance related with, re related with Josephine and the matriarchy. Then I believe that art speaks better you know, uh, than us. Y, y, pero nadie quería trabajar conmigo, o sea, esa es la verdad, nadie, porque era yo mujer y porque yo había ganado. Bueno, tiene determinación. Ella es mi esclava en el concreto y es todo, todo, todo lo hicimos juntas. Yo lo único que hacía era eh, especificarles dónde eran los trazos, los, los ejes, eh, aquí, trazar, o sea, la arquitectura, ¿no? decirles cómo aplicábamos ahí los ejes, marcábamos los ejes de las casas, de las viviendas, de aquí va este muro, de aquí va esto y así, ¿no? Somos líderes, no competimos. Tú sabes que los cabrones se llevaron hasta los planos. No tenían los planos. Tú sabes que no había una sola máquina para hacer un pinche bloque de concreto. La extensión de la escuela es el útero donde se puso la educación. Que improvisar. Claro, con estas mujeres que te digo que son extraordinarias, ¿no? Son muy hábiles pero muy fuertes también. La educación debe ser reestructurada. Hay que cambiarla. Porque tiene un sistema patriarcal. Hay que crear nuevos sistemas de solidaridad, de equidad, de ayuda, de respeto. Sobre todo respeto. Respeto. Sí. Pero sí. quedaron bien las A ellas les gustó mucho que era lo importante, ¿ves? Que les gustó el diseño, les gustó trabajar conmigo, se dejaban organizar muy bien, no andaban 
como generalmente los hombres que tú dices chaca chaca y ellos te dicen no, está mejor chucu chucu. No, no. O sea, con ellas se, se trabajó muy, muy, muy agradable. Muy, es una experiencia única para mí. Josefina, ellos no quisieron trabajar contigo. ¿Sabes por qué? Porque eres mujer y porque ganas. Thank you so much for being with us and uh, visit, visit us um, whiteboxandwhite.org um, let us know anything, uh, write us back at, to info at whiteboxandwhite.org and ex uh, keep uh, watching us uh, Instagram, Facebook and Mass Device will tell you about further performances and uh, moments uh, during this exhibition that goes right through June 30th. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs>